Yeah. Uh, Red River Podcast. I don't even know. Maybe 157. Um, I today. Right. Yeah, I think we're right. <laughs> Not that it even matters. It's like whatever. It, it's like, you know what? It's 1557. Uh, so uh, today we're, we're going to talk to you, filmmaker Anthony Edward Curry uh, in the house that uh, I, I, we get a chance to talk to you through uh, the gods known as uh, Johnny North. So what's up, man? How are you? Thank you for having me on. Man. I appreciate you guys taking the time to talk to me. Yo, for okay. sure. Yeah, yeah, man. Anytime someone makes a movie, you know, and the link is like, yo, first of all, I got to ask you how you know Johnny North, because I, I need to hear that story. Well, I uh, I work for his company. We shoot okay. crush junk kits and stuff. So I've been working yeah. with them since uh, 2019, about okay. right when he started Glass Engine. So. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah, yeah. He yeah. always sends me all like, you know, like he knows we love like horror shit so he'd be like oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. gotta go to work and then it'll be like a picture of like jamie lee curtis or some shit and i'm like <laughs> yeah, ah yeah we like, did a job with jamie lee curtis she's cool yeah yeah it was just cool. like 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 all like the horror shit like he don't give a fuck about anything he like he loves like terrible black metal from like <laughs> he's like yo you 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 and lang it like he you, you might like get yeah. along with him because he he likes to like a lot of that um just like unlistenable, like Emperor and like all that shit. All Dude, that shit. I Norris do like a little probably, melody in there. But he's been to yeah. more shows in his life than probably I've, been, yeah, like than anybody I know. That dude's yeah. always going to a live show. Hell yeah, me, us too. So that that's, yeah. you know, but shout out to him. And another thing, he he actually inspired the next episode, right? So um, he always tells me, you got to watch Spinal Tap. And like, I still to this day have never seen Spinal Tap. Right. Which is weird to him. Like it, it kills him. Like he's like, I'll send you a li-. like it just breaks his heart. So uh, Langan up there never saw arachnophobia. So right. we're both going to watch those two, you know, classic movies and then talk about it. So that's As uh, a double feature. You're going to watch them the same night. That's yeah, a great, that's a great double feature, though. If you well, think about it. So I'm going to watch Spinal Tap. He's going to watch Arachnophobia oh, okay. and then we'll do like an episode yeah. like talking about right, it and right. stuff like that. Because I mean, well, it I, can upset people when you have like for the longest time. And it, they're all like, I know that it's going to be a good film, I'm sure. But you just miss it. And it's not the first right. thing you think of. But like I did, I hadn't seen Shawshank Redemption like ever. Okay. And that, for after a while, I was like purposely not seeing it. Because people get so upset that I hadn't seen it, I kind of yeah. enjoyed that. Yeah. Now that that that's like, that's that's your move. Now that's like your leg drop, basically. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um. So, as a filmmaker, what are some classics that you haven't seen that people might have think that you have seen? Who's I haven't seen? Shit, that's hard. What's like one or two that 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 like everyone has seen, but you you haven't gotten around to? Who I haven't seen? Damn, I never thought about that. Uh, yeah, like Avatar or something. No, actually, I might have seen Avatar. I never seen Avatar. Oh, I The Hobbit. Never I never, I never saw The Hobbit. Okay, okay. Is that like, is that considered like? Would that be in that? You said classics. No, nah, it doesn't matter. What, whatever, whatever. Like, yo, mad people seen the ha- The Hobbit. Yeah, 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 like I, the I, Hobbit. I, I, I don't fuck with Lord of the Rings or, or none of that, none of that shit. So I like, get down with that, but The Hobbit. It wasn't as good as the original trilogy, yeah. no doubt. I, I mean, I never saw like a lot of like like the new Star Wars. Like, I didn't, I didn't watch like Episode Seven or whatever. So, like, yeah. I'm out mm-hmm. of the loop with like the new Star Wars, like the Han Solo movie. Like, I haven't seen any of those, any of those people that would be surprised. At, I'm trying to think, what's like another go? I'm trying to hit you with like a classic. You'd be like, damn, you haven't seen that. Uh, I don't know, dude. I've seen yeah. so many movies. I probably see everything. You I see that so much. That's good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's so to me, it's like, um, you know, like it's, I, I love writing music. I'm a songwriter and I listen to everything. I'll hit play on anything and, and right. I absorb it all. So like as a filmmaker, I, I would imagine like the more shit that you watch, you know, it, it's probably like super inspiring. And uh, I know you've been making movies for like fucking ever because I was like doing some research and it said like your first movie was like when you, like you wrote it when you were 12, right? Is it yeah, movie I, movie night? I made, yeah, I made a feature film when I was like yeah, twelve, and then I finished it when I was like fourteen. But I never really put it out, so I consider Trap to be like the directorial debut. You know, the real one that nobody ever saw the movie I made when I was a kid. But yeah, I've been making movies since I was little. You know, on VHS tape. And, yeah, but that's like an undertaking. You know, like so. Yeah. So, um, what propelled you so young? Like, what, what, what was 
the bug that bit you that you you know you wanted to start that early like what uh, well my 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 dad he he was like a big cine cinephile you know he showed me like all the classics like actually one flew over the cuckoo's nest is on right now like, and, you know, he and, showed me and, like dad and jaw and, and stuff come on like what movie was he in he was in the warriors oh yeah and he was in the warrior so but he had, he grew up in new york city so he had a lot of stories he had a, he has a story uh a bumping into al pacino when he was in this uh, on the set of serpico like he was he was like working in the city and he was like pushing a car or something i forget what he was working at and Al Pacino, like he bumped into Al Pacino and he didn't even realize. And then he was walking down the road and the lady was like, you know who that was? That was Al Pacino. But he was in like the Serpico gear. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. So like he had, he always just had like cool stories about like cinema. And I don't know, maybe I just felt, well, my uncle Jim, he's not really my uncle. He's my dad's like good friend, but he made like little short films and stuff with us as kids. So I think that kind of got the bug in me. And then I started like acting in like independent horror films on like the East Coast kind of scene. We went to like horror conventions when I was real young, so kind of met people from there. And yeah, stuff. you and you then, met uh Sean King from the Gooligans. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah he directed I, oh, two of, know, two Sean of our videos. King? He yeah, directed yeah, yeah. two of our two of our music videos. Oh shit, that's crazy! I told yeah. him about this screening on July twentieth. Hopefully, he can come out. That would yeah, be yeah. cool to let all of us to get together, like. For sure. Uh, so Trap is is basically playing at uh the Belmore. Yeah. Playhouse thing. Yeah, I think so, Bill Moran. Yeah, yeah, I, I've been there. We actually, my, a friend of mine threw a, a 40th birthday party there and we watched Dead Alive upstairs. Well, that's uh, badass. Yeah, it was pretty badass for sure. <laughs> but uh, so yeah, all right, listen. Let, let's just talk about the, the, the movie that you're that you're here to talk about. Uh, it's called Trap, the real Asbury Park. Uh, you know, some people when it comes to like hometowns. Uh, you know, they can't wait to get the fuck out of them and other people just embrace it and they put the shot the the spotlight on it and stuff. So uh, what is it about, you know, this location? You know, like, why do you rep it so hard? Um, well, it's where I grew up and uh, I think. Uh, New Jersey itself, I mean, Asbury Park in particular, it has just a lot of history, you know, like um, there's a crazy story like Led Zeppelin turned down playing Woodstock because they were playing convention hall and Asbury park. So it was like, it was like Asbury park was like the music capital. I mean, you know, like Springsteen or whatever. Oh, yeah. A lot of, a lot of people came out of this, out of this neck of the woods, you know, Danny DeVito, Jack Nicholson, like all these like pretty, I don't know. I just think it has like a, my grandfather was a projectionist. So I always said like the, the celluloid of film like got into my like bloodstream or something like from him touching the film or something so uh no nah, why i left asbury or i left this area like asbury neptune area when i was 18 but i wrote this movie in high schools i wrote this movie as a kid and then uh i was living in brooklyn and then i would come back and forth kind of to shoot in uh in asbury but i don't know it's just like this town has this like kind of dark cloud that Asbury Park, it's like nicknamed Dark City just because it was years like after the riots of the 70s, like um, Asbury, like kind of took it. It was a ghost town. Like there was nothing there. Like, you know, people would be like, yeah, stay away from that area type type deal. So uh, I don't know. There's always been this like up and down roller coaster of this place. Like Asbury has been having it such like highs and lows and like, you know, being one of the like hot commodities of like the 40s then it kind of had a decline in like the 50s and then came back in the 60s and 70s all these music bands and then the riots happened so it was like i don't know this sound has a lot of history and yeah, it's just yeah. interesting and crime crime is like we love crime movies growing up like that's you know right that's what we gravitate towards from like right. fucking watching death wish for the first time as a kid <laughs> and you're like whoa you're like this yeah, is yeah. crazy Right, right. Yeah, that's kind of, and then the, that's kind of like the environment I grew up in, like, like Asbury's kind of on a resurgence where it's like the the east side is like the beach side is like really nice and gentrified, and then the 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 you know the west side of the tracks is still like, you know, it's a hood, it's ghetto. So that's like it's, Atlantic um, City, like you know, like right. when you're like on that boardwalk, it's like whatever. Right, right. And then, then once... go a couple blocks in, then you right, sure. you're worried about getting your pockets taken or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bunny, yeah. bunny ears for sure out there. Right, right. 
But uh, so, yeah, man, it, crime, like all those movies like we grew up on, like the 90s and stuff like that, um, like any of those things like influence you, I, I would imagine Abel Ferrara probably maybe like oh, Sa- Abel's Sa- the best. Yeah, so I like, go to every single every time Abel a new movie comes to New York, I go. He does a lot of premieres at the Roxy, and he'll like come and do a Q and A and stuff. You, you're so up, I, you're I try up. to go to every Abel uh, screening I can. You're I up to date Abel on the Ferrara. films, yeah? yeah? Yeah, yeah. I haven't seen uh, Padre Pio yet. That's the one I'm waiting to see. But I saw uh, Tommaso in the theater. We just saw Our Christmas. He did like a re-screening of Our Christmas. And Ken Kelsch, his DP, was there. So I got to talk to those dudes. And uh, Joe Delat, De- Delia, who does, who's our, actually, I think he lives in Long Island too. He, um, he scored, he's been scoring his movies since Thriller Killer and Miss, Miss 45 and shit. So they're all uh, good dudes, but I love Abel. Abel, Harmony Kareen, Larry yeah, Clark, Kareen. I like movies like that. Yeah, right. Thanks. Kareen, right? For sure. Because I'm like, <laughs> anytime you see something like, like I was talking about the trash humpers the other day and just oh, like, yeah. Yeah, fucking like, yo, Netflix, like when Netflix started, like, you know, renting out DVDs and shit, I, I needed to complete the Harmony Kareen, like filmography. Ooh. I'm like, yeah. all right, now I got to watch everything. And uh, I remember he had trash humper. I was like, oh, I never seen this. And I rented it. And I was just like, holy shit. This is literally <laughs> yeah. Just old, you know, people in makeup like tr- <laughs> like he just yeah. he's so fucking outrageous that I, I, I couldn't even make it. Obviously, I, you know, the, the joke, the joke was on me for even attempting right. to, you know, and uh, right. But then when you get, you get stuff to like harmony, Mr. though, when he's reined in a little bit and it's like and that's what when me and Sam were talking about your film after we watched it. And uh, and we're making comparisons to that just stylistically, as far as, you know, when people are speaking and the camera's not on them, little things remind us of that. And like when, you know, kids, when that came out, that was like right in me and Sam's wheelhouse, as far as like our skate, age skate groups cult. and stuff. Right, right. Yeah, skate culture. Like, oh, this is like it. my friends. Like, this is like my boys. Like, yeah. Talk like this kind of like. Yeah. When people, somebody really gets it right and it's like genuine and it's, it doesn't always happen. And you, and your film, you know, is, is, is street like that on that level, you know? Oh, thank you. Yeah. yeah uh, Harmony always talks about, uh, I kind of, I, I kind of use this too. He, he calls it like a liquid narrative, like where the, 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 the story almost like in the narrative almost like moves through you. Like where it's like a, it's more about like an energy or like a um or a feeling rather than like a plot or whatever like an ABC structure of things. It's like well, this like BBB. So when you're when you're making something like Trap though, like um, you know, because it's like fascinating to ha- like have all these like bits and pieces and stuff. Like like when you shoot it, like do you know exactly what you're doing or or does it take form as you're like making the movie? Um. I mean, before I go into making a movie, I pretty much know. With a movie like this, though, with uh, with using real people sometimes, the movie, like, you know, whatever, if, like, and I use a lot of my friends, so, like, you know, if they, like, wouldn't show up or something. So there was a lot, uh, I like to rewrite a lot within the edit, but there's still a structure. Like, I go into shooting with a structure and, like, knowing that day, like, I don't really make storyboards, but I make, like, a shot list. So I kind of know. But then a lot of it I play with in the edit. I think editing is my favorite because you can like retell a story within the edit. And like yeah, with yeah. shooting, I, even my scripts, they're kind of like the trap was only like a, I don't know, a 40 page something script. And it's a 96 minute movie. So uh, I don't really like rely on like, I just use the script, you know, to get the actors and get the money together. But I don't like use that as a blueprint or like, I'm not really too keen on like, you know, you have to say this line exactly like this. You know, I find it within the uh, within the making of it. It's like almost like riffing or like jazzing or something, you know, but still within the form of cinema or what movies are, you know. Now, uh, super hard to to really explain without like kind of like, um, you know, as far as like the plot goes, but like for anyone listening that you might want to get to the Belmore thing. Like how, how would you describe the movie basically for them? Um, it's basically like an amalgamation of crime stories about Asbury Park told from a perspective of a uh, criminal serving a life sentence, kind of looking back at his life. Cool. Yeah. 
That makes sense. But it's a bunch of different. So I call it amalgamation because it's not just one story. It's like a bunch of stories. You know, it's more about the area during this period of time. And and you know, for us that don't really know, like as far as what happens after you make a movie, I know that there's like um. You shut this shit off. <laughs> there's like um you know, like the festival stuff and all that other stuff. And then later on, like the streamings or like the VODs and stuff like that. So like once like something like once this is done, I, I know it's been playing in festivals. And then from there, like, what is the life like in in your head is the, you know, how this movie gets out there? Um, Yeah, we're, we're, we're going to do the festival circuit for a little bit. I think there's like 20 more festivals I'm waiting here back from. And then uh, we've been hit up by a few distribution companies, but um. We're kind of playing it by ear. I want to do like a theatrical release for it, or at least, at least like a West Coast and a West and East Coast theatrical kind of thing, kind of deal. So uh, we'll kind of play it, and then hopefully maybe like some physical media or something. But still waiting to hear uh, back from uh, a couple of distributors that we we've been talking to. So and how's hopefully like one of those worked out? How are like the festivals? Because I know that uh, was it Chattanooga was one, but I think it premiered in like Queens or something like that. So like, what what's that whole vibe like? Oh, it was great, especially Queens World Film Festival. We we uh we premiered at the Museum of the Moving Image, and uh, that was great because we got a five point one surround sound mix of the movie. So it was great to like hear it in a theater like that. And that was a theater I'd, I would always go to because I used to work um at the U.S. Open. I was a camera operator filming tennis and shit for a couple of years. So uh, after work, we would always go to the museum, the moving image and uh, catch a flick. I call it like a Kubrick uh, retrospective there. But yeah, playing uh, Trap there was, yeah, it was really cathartic. It was cool. It was um, that festival. I mean, honestly, all these festivals, they, they really respect cinema. And I think Trap has been getting in every one where like they really appreciate the films and like appreciate the filmmaker and really make it about them. It's a really cool experience. You know, it's a make a movie is a communal experience. You know, as much as I want people to see the movie, I'd rather them see it in a dark theater for ninety six minutes, not distracted by their phone or you're right, whatever. Yeah. You watch it at home. Yeah. Like I don't want to watch it. Watch it on your phone. But but then um, again, I'm a producer on the movie too, so that the part of me is like, ah, every I want everybody to see it. So no, nah, but it's it, like it, sure. like, it's true. Like even like when I watch a movie at home, at least you know now we have big ass TVs. I put my phone, I just fucking like throw it like to the other side of the room because yeah. it's like, oh, this email or this text or this whatever the fuck. But it's right. like, nah, you got to be locked in. I was telling sure. you, like I watched that Becky sequel. Did you watch Becky, the, the first movie? Like me? No, yes. Anthony. Him. Becky? Yeah. I don't think so. Yeah. I just watched the sequel to this movie and it just, yeah. it was one of the, like, I love movies. I could find... I could find the beauty in anything. Oh, it's very with Kevin James. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they oh, made a sequel to it. Okay. They made a sequel to it. And I was like, whatever. We're just like, you know, flipping through shit, some shit yesterday, me and my girlfriend. And it was like, man, I love everything. But after watching this, I was like, this is the most unnecessary sequel of all time. <laughs> but, <Right. laughs> but I paid attention. Obviously, you got to yeah. put your phone away and stuff like that. So, um, I I got to ask you, too, uh, the music in the film coming from all types of areas, which I guess you're you're you must have a wide palette of where you're coming from. But uh, Bow, Lead Belly, Yardbirds, there's yeah. a black metal group I saw listed, Nagaroth, I think from Germany yeah, um, and R.A. the Rugged Man. Who, the second I heard that voice, I, me and Sam are huge uh fans of ra so oh really ra is a good yeah. friend of mine yeah i i produced uh two videos for ra the rugged man his last uh, nice. dragon fire video and With... uh and eky oh yeah. sweet so oh i love that that's that the one inspect the deck yeah yeah inspect the yep. deck yeah, Kill yeah. It. deck yep. is tight deck is a cool dude that was great working with him he's a, he's a cool cat nice yeah there yeah. was some wild shit that happened on that set. i probably can't talk about it probably won't uh, but yeah, it's, it's a lot <laughs> We we let's go back to RA in a second, but like yeah, like when you put together the soundtrack, like how does that go for you? Um, yeah, like you were talking earlier, like you're a music guy and your your uh music is very all over the place. And like same with me, like if you go on the shuffle on my Apple Music on my phone, it's like 
you would think like I'm a schiz I'm a schizophrenic or something, you know, because it's like that. It'll go from Lead Belly to like Billy Holiday. Then I'll be listening to like Judas Priest, and then like sure. you know, it's like kind of all over the place. But uh, I think I think musically when I edit. So uh, all under the guise of cinema, but I think music is very important, especially in the writing, even directing, and you know, because it's it's a lot of it's about feeling and mood and and the energy. So and I Any... think music helps tell that. Any movies in particular or scenes where like uh, music really stood out to you? I mean, Abel Ferrara used music a lot. You know, we were talking like kids. Um, we always we always reference that uh, firecracker scene in Boogie Nights is like one of like the most intense. The sister uh, Christian, yeah yeah, 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 yeah. You could say like Tarantino. I, you know, Sam Peckinpah, his use of like uh, C. W. McCall and like Convoy and shit. Like I always love shit like that and. Uh, yeah, me. I, music is important. I, uh, it's hard to choose music too. Like it's hard. It's, but it 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 helps tell the story. And sometimes you can cut a scene to the music without trying to make it feel like music video y. But like, right? You know, you just find a like a certain pace, and it kind of helps guide the story. Plus, you... like these characters are all you know. It's a white boy in the hood, so like his music probably would be all over the place, and like, it's kind of like. You know, it's a movie told from the outside or the inside out rather than the outside in, you know. Did you always want to play the lead character or did you maybe consider someone else or no, it was supposed to, it was supposed to be a black actor and then uh my boy was gonna do it and he passed away when we were kids when I was writing it. Jesus and then uh <laughs> that's all years later I didn't really think about the movie for a while and then uh when I started shooting it, I was like, I don't know how long this is gonna take. You know, it's a low budget movie. Uh, I like to say a smart budget movie, but uh, it's a smart budget. So it's like, I don't know who I'm going to convince. This could take three years to do. So I was like, I know I'm going to be there every day. So I'll just play it. Yeah. So that's interesting. So you said you wrote it at like super young and yeah, like, 16, is it, I think it was. and then as like the years go by, like, how do you just decide like to just start doing it? Well, there was this other movie I was trying to make. It was just pretty big. I had like some serious money attached and that kind of fell through. And I was kind of pissed off and I was kind of like, all right, I'm going to go just make something on my own. And then I'll let I'll let the you know, I always say like everybody hops on the train once it's already rolling. So let me just get this thing rolling and I'll figure it out as I go. Kind of, you know. Yeah. Yeah. That's the one. How did about you shoot it? Um, I know there's some Super 8 in there and stuff, but what, what did you use primarily like that? Uh... I to, shot on everything. It. I shot uh mostly most of the movies shot on a Panasonic GH2 that I hacked like years ago. Mm-hmm. I've had it for years. Uh I shot on Black Magic Pocket 4K, a little bit on the digital Bolex. We shot some Super 8 stuff. Um VHS. And then a lot of this stuff I uh wow. reprojected onto a white wall and then I reshot it in HD. So wow. So definitely like layered. And it's, you know, it's a mixed media film. I shot, you know, I just, I kind of shot it on whatever I could get my hands on, you know? Right. Um, the, you know, I'm going to go back to the RA thing. Like, how'd you link up with him? I knew RA for a while, just kind of like through mutual friends. And uh, he needed somebody for his music video to come out and be an extra. So we started talking more and then I would help him whatever with locations and stuff. So. And then I produced a music video for him. So, uh, were you like aware of, of his music? Oh yeah, I knew I know RA's music since I was a little kid. I've wow. always been into hip hop and shit. So yeah, yeah same. Like, and then same working with him, it was kind of crazy. Yeah, RA's a good dude. Yeah, so I I remember old RA that was super crazy, and uh, new RA that's like uh you know super smart, very yeah. dedicated. I just saw him. He's still crazy, but. I just saw I just saw him in Brooklyn with Onyx like uh, maybe like last month and shit. Oh, nice, yo! But every time I see him play, like I saw him with Sean Price a while, like oh wow, every, yeah. I like every time I see him, he's just like it, I never got a, to see Price. I I never met Price or I didn't know that. I knew I met them kind of after all that. I yeah. know his. I know Bernadette, uh, Sean's wife, and his and his kid, little Sean Price. I I know them from the music videos and stuff, but. 
yeah, that's crazy that you got to see Sean Price. Like, I, I consider, I mean, him and R.A. are like, yeah, they're, they're yeah, Mike Tyson, like, Monkey Bars, like you know, Sean, like yeah. So I got super lucky. I guess they played out in Patchogue and Long Island. I, I just you know, and it was like. Somebody had a phone. I'll never forget it because anytime I see my girlfriend take out a phone, like they're like filming the fucking shit, and RA just takes this person's phone and fucking flings it across the fucking place. I mean, he probably <laughs> just did it out of a reaction and just like just to get the shit out of my fucking face. I mean, who knows how much he had to pay for that fucking thing if right, he right. did? I hear he, he does that. If he broke, he broke. I, I heard him. He, he did that on his last tour. I think he broke somebody's phone, but he, and then they hit him up on Twitter and he like paid for his phone. Yeah, yeah, so like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a good dude. He's a good dude. He'll break, yeah. your shit. he'll break your shit and break your nose, but he'll pay for it afterwards. And I and I get it. Like, like it's it's always like that thing of like, I try not to. Like, occasionally, like I'll take a picture. Like, if it's something like super special, you know, like the Misfits or like fucking, you know, some shit. They're like playing that. at the Prudential Center this weekend. I think. I know so, they are. You are. Guys going this I, I mean, I I see your Misfits thing in the back. Yeah, yeah. I, we went I, to the, the, the show same. at MSG, and uh, it was so great that I was like, you know what? I think I'm I, I'm good. I'm gonna ride off into the sunset with that show being my memory, <laughs> just yeah, in yeah, case. Because yeah. oh, yeah, I, I can't hit up you everything. Got the, you got the crimson ghost I, in your arm. I, I, yeah, I got, I he to does. Too. <laughs> Me too. I got oh, mine, really? and and it's funny because like what what I, like I had a jailhouse tattoo, so like I was in jail. And like I was a young kid, and I got a Misfits tattoo that was so shitty that I ended up getting the real Crimson Ghost hey. over it. Oh, so, cool. Shout out, shout out to Mike who who you know hooked up his uh his Walkman and and tattooed me. But nice. so it, it was kind of like his <laughs> he was doing he was on his way to do life for three bank robberies. So. Oh shit. But that's he, trap two. That's the sequel. Yeah, that's he the started the sequel. Right? He laced he laced up my arm for twenty five bucks in commissary. So shout out oh, to him. Nice. But nice. so like oh, like wow, like like noodles. like like, <laughs> like <laughs> Brian like Brian said like so I saw them in uh, at Prudential for the first time and like like man yo it, when I tell you like you got a Crimson Ghost tattoo I like it, it's the only band that I have tattooed on me because as a kid. They were so special to me when I first heard Walk Among Us through like, you know, skate fucking videos and like Metallica covering Last Caress, like as we were metalheads. Um, it was such an important band to me. But the, when we got into them, they were already done. They were gone. They were never right. going to play again. You know, I'm like 14 skateboarding, being like, wow, Walk Among Us is the greatest. Then fast forward, they start doing these reunion shows. I see them in Jersey. They fucking suck. The sound was terrible. Oh, shit. Then they play MSG and I see the show and I'm like, this is the show that I've been waiting my whole life for. And it was, it was the greatest show I've ever seen. It was just, it, it was just like it was special. It was yeah. special without sounding like fucking corny as fuck, but it, it was, was like, one of those nights, those yeah. MSG perfect experiences. Yeah. Yeah, right. yeah. And my boy just recently was like, yo, I got misfit tickets and I love gaslight anthem too. So, um, I, He's like, I got misfit tickets, general admission, and if my girlfriend breaks up with me, you'll you'll come with me. And I was like, yeah, whatever. I didn't think she was gonna break up with him. And sure enough, he, he texted me last <laughs> week. He's like, yo, he's like, you ready to go? And I'm like, nah, man, I got plans. So like, he passed it off because I just want to. I want that memory to live on. <laughs> so, right, right. Yeah. Because yeah, if yeah. it's terrible on Saturday, you're gonna be pit. You're gonna be like, I it's just like. There's so much shit going on. You can't like hit everything. If it would be all those years, well. With COVID and whatnot, when all those bands not touring, and now it's like everybody's touring at once, and it's like every weekend there's something fucking awesome going on. Yeah, you, know? you yeah, were gonna go to everything. today. Today's the day, right? That's the show you were gonna go to. Oh, oh yeah, in Brooklyn. Yeah, they're on the Trap soundtrack too. Okay, yeah, I didn't. Luck, I didn't luck, up, lucky it Thirteen. Was on, yeah, right? it was on Sun. It was on Sunday or Saturday. I didn't. I didn't get to get up there. I kind of. I was kind of pissed because Steve's my boy and. uh Today's the day is probably one of the greatest. I saw the picture because my boy, my boy John Lamakia took a picture with him uh, from Candiria. And uh, I was like, oh, shit, this is the show you were talking about. It's at Lucky 13, which is like yeah. the loudest fucking venue on the planet yeah, when you go yeah. in that that room and shit. So uh, and today's the day shows aren't fucking loud. If you guys ever get if you guys ever get a chance to see it, you got you got to definitely check out today's the day. As far as as far as like shows that you remember, like you know, through the years, like what are some like memorable live shows or bands that you always try to catch? 
today's the day. Ari the Rugged Man, every time he yeah. puts on the fucking greatest show, he does. He re- he genuinely does, man. And still, like he don't he don't stop. I don't I like I don't think that dude. Like I think he got gills because he breathes out of somewhere else, <laughs> some other for like some other part of his body because he don't even breathe like he's so he's fucking that dude's fucking i was at his video shoot so that's what uh, he did a video shoot out on long island and uh my friend steve is like you know good friends with him so he invited me out and he was doing a video with fucking bill paxton's son and i was like oh, yeah. fuck i'm like i love bill paxton man max and, uh, i think his name is right max yeah, uh i forget what it is I don't think it's Max. It's 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 something else. I think he he was he was starting to rap, and I think like he used just PAX PAX. Oh, oh shit. Oh, um, shit. but yeah, just just great video, and uh, yeah, man, that guy. When it comes to like hip hop, sometimes you know shit's sluggish, and some people just it's whatever. But like the Onyx and like RA thing are so rah rah rah. That it's right. like, you know, it's like you just it just hypes you up and shit. And uh, I'm pretty sure Tragedy Gaddafi yelled at me in the bathroom. It was so <laughs> it was so loud. I didn't really know what he said to me, but I don't think he was really happy with me. I was just like, yeah, I don't, <laughs> I'm like, this is the weirdest shit ever. So but um, <laughs> yeah, uh, one uh, one more thing about Jersey uh, as far as like, you know, obviously you identify that as your, like your hometown, right? Right, right, yeah. So, who would you put on the Mount Rushmore of of like you know Jersey? Like, give me four. Like it, like music, movies, uh, a brother, a teacher. Who are the, who are the four tops of uh of Jersey? I would say like like Nicholson. I think Nicholson got to be on there, even though he's been gone a long time. He's yeah, still like bred here. Fucking. Uh... Which one was it? It was uh, not Laurel and Hardy. Fucking okay. Abbott and Costello. Abbott, yeah. Yeah, was it Lou Costello yeah. or uh, I think Lou Costello's from Asbury Park? So he'd be. On I think there. so because there was a Sopranos episode they shot in front of the statue of that guy. I think. Yeah, I think he I might have been. Right I'm, I think he might have been from. So if it's not him, him or uh, or. Or maybe it was Bud. No, it was Bud. Bud was from Asbury Park. So I'll put his little skinny okay. ass up there. <laughs> uh, who else? Uh, Springsteen is cool. Maybe he could get up there. You got to oh, throw him up on there. What about? I got to throw, Bo- throw Bruce on there. Yeah, I'll throw probably Bruce. put myself on there. Ah, sure. Yeah. Uh, right? I could put myself on there. Yeah, right? why not? I'm, building, I'm, build, I'm the contractor. I could put it up. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Uh, better than John Bon Jovi. Shout out to his rest stop, though. Queen Latifah. Oh yeah, yeah. Hey, I went to his rest stop. He got a big statue out of him outside, and the James Gandolfini one has yeah. nothing. It don't have no pictures of him, nothing, or at least I didn't see it. That's crazy. But like the John Bon Jovi one got his guitars, got like trivia on the wall. And got his the Gandolfini one. They like they were like ah fucking. They like just threw it together. JB like a burger listen, wow. and JB JBJ is no <laughs> joke in Jersey, man. JBJ has got a lot of pull up in Jersey, man. Yes, yeah, because he's yeah, he's sitting on I used to skateboard with his son. Oh his yeah. Name. Oh, his yeah. son married. Who did he just marry? <laughs> did he get married? It was like a, he was like a oh yeah. a little older than me. Like a famous girl. I want to say like You're it's right, like man. Ice spice I, or I, something. I, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> that would be great. That would be cool. You now know what? Jovi's son married Ice Spice. It just <laughs> might be. It just might be Ice Spice. <laughs> um, that would be badass. So, who else? I got one more on the Mount Rushmore, though. Yeah, do it. Right? DeVito, maybe? It's always so. Oh, no, 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 no. I put Alice. I mean, she's French, but she, like, I would put Alice Guy Blanche on there. I don't know who that is. Got she me. was like, um, She's basically the reason movies exist. Okay. Um. When when all these movie studios were because Hollywood started in New Jersey. I don't know. A lot of people don't know that, but like the first movie studios were made in Fort Lee, New Jersey, and she owned the first one. And she was a a, a woman. A first ever studio was run by a woman, and she kind of got like ridiculed out of there when it started making money, and then you know because then the rich white white cats started to get in there and were like, yeah, hey, yeah, get this French girl out of here. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. 
I mean, she, uh, wow. I her, are, I we, are, we, are we dropping jewels today or what? I mean, come on. Who? A wh Alice Guy Blanc. There's also, I watched a great documentary about her on the plane. I, I went to LA like two or three weeks ago and I watched a documentary about her. I mean, I knew about her before, but the documentary is really good. I forget the name. It might just what? be her name, but check it out. Yeah, I got to check that out for sure. I, you also have a friend that made a, the, a band called Death Documentary. Oh, Mark. Yeah. Yeah, great Michael doc. Dino. Fucking yeah, yeah, like he's cool. He helped me a lot with the ending of trap because um I shot I edited on Final Cut Pro 7 and like that's what like nobody uses these days except for a few people and I think Mark still might use it or maybe he just still knows a lot about it. But uh I was having some is issues and Mark like came through and like saved the day for me. So I owe that dude a lot. Without him there'd be no trap. So yeah, Mark, I mean, you know, his documentary is fantastic. That's fantastic. That's one of my favorite yeah. documentaries. Of all we, yeah, we did. We did a, a, you know, top five documentary episode and right. or maybe it was music docs. And uh, we mm. I'm pretty sure we all had that. It was just unbelievable. Right. Like that story of like, oh, yeah, like, uh, yeah, we were in this band. It's like, wait, you were in this band. And then you start like predating everything. And then yeah. you listen to it and you're like, this is so fucking good. And you're like, yeah. whoa, this like is the start of punk. This is like before real yeah. like punk drop. Like, is this the start of punk rock? Like, was this it the whole time? Like, right. Know? It was yeah. mind blowing because I did first, you know, we're so in deep with music and music knowledge and stuff. You think you've like heard it all. And so I'm like, how did I never know about right. this shit? It was fucking right. knocked me on they my They had the tapes ass. up in the attic or something. Yeah. That, yeah. that story is crazy. And then the kid's son found it. Oh, it's so, it's such a good story. This... Like, that's the beauty Something now. like you think they made up like you think that story was made up honestly like yeah it feels like they wrote that script but now nah, it's like that's just all real it's just so good and that's the beauty now of like technology you know there's so many more filmmakers the streaming sites you can get it all out and stuff yeah. like that at the very least you know like now enough time has passed where like i just watched that movie on fucking the blackberry you know what I mean? Like, mm, it's just yeah. like, you know, it's just like enough time passes by where you get like, you know, so much insight on this stuff, uh, you know, from like Lorena Bobbitt to like fucking I just watch an American Gladiators five piece documentary. Like, <laughs> oh, shit. That's a five part documentary. Yeah, that's what I said. Yeah. You could have done that shit in an hour, but like they stretched it out. But it <laughs> yeah. was like it was still so compelling. Yeah. Was there like was... one episode on Nitro <laughs> and then one on whatever other ones? Yo, you got to watch it because it was like, to me, there was like, it, it just it like, it seemed like a snapshot in time. It was just like a year or two, but it was like five years. And um, they, at the end of the day, it's just really good storytelling. And whoever made sure. that documentary just did a really good um, job of extending and making the stuff very compelling. It didn't feel like there's certain documentaries, docu-series that you watch and you're like, okay, five episodes, you could have told that in two. And it felt that way. This yeah. was like every bit of it was like, oh, from beginning to end and stuff. So, yo, so for a filmmaker like you, um, in your head, if you could make a documentary about something, what would you do? I'm actually talking about doing a documentary about my uh, my friend Josh, who was a. Uh, he died here. He, he killed himself like a couple months ago. So we're talking about trying to do a doc doc about him. But uh I love documentaries. I think uh, I would love to do a documentary about the SSS Morro Castle, um, which is the cat the the, um, the uh, big ship that like crashed, I think it crashed in his, like the jetty or something off Asbury Park, and it lit on fire, and like a bunch of people died, and then they started laying out the bodies on the Asbury. Uh, beach like i think it was in the 1920s and they they would have people come and pay to come see the dead bodies like this is like a show like it was like a like a show or something so do a documentary about that maybe heavy yeah i would love to do uh as, i mean at new jersey alone has so, so much documentary stuff um what are some what are some good like any good docu series that you want to recommend or you want to like shout out or like a good documentary uh i just saw uh the well not just i saw the velvet underground documentary and that was fantastic uh, i think it was that on showtime maybe? that's on apple, apple apple tv i think yeah it's great yeah it did like a small like little theatrical uh run and i saw it in at the showroom in asbury park and uh i really want to see fire of love about the volcano 
Uh, the people jump in the volcano. Well, they didn't jump in, but it's like these people who died, this couple that died searching for volcanoes. That looks good, but, um, you know, I love all like Herzog's documentaries, like, yeah. uh, Cave oh, yeah. Forgotten Dreams, and like, uh, all, all, all the dark shit, all the dark shit. Yeah, I like Into the Abyss, that one he did with the, uh, the prisoners on death row. Yeah, like, that was yeah. wild. Their last, their last day or whatever. That was that wild. Was, yeah. That was a crazy doc. I like his or um, Grizzly Man. That was cool. I just like his, his documentary style. Is like, I don't know, because he's not like worried about himself, but like his, his like the way he voice over. It's just so like, oh my god, I don't know. It feels like a narrative. Like you feel like you're watching a narrative film. Like when you check out his docs. Yeah, it's, I was it's so captivating the way he talks, and it's just you're hanging on every word, and yeah. he just has such a way of phrasing that's just it, it's so compelling it's amazing it's like poetic like it's sort of like mm -hmm. kind of what i was trying to do with trap with the voiceover and trap it was like he's yeah. so poetic with his words so i try to like definitely that's very hers uh kind of influence i like now, you ever see abel's documentary abel just did a documentary abel ferrar did a documentary uh sport and life about him on the road right before the pandemic promoting Siberia, I think it was. No, but I I gotta oh, watch that. Shit. I'll watch yeah. all Abel's docs. He did a, a one about the Chelsea Hotel. I did see Chelsea that. That was great. Rocks. That was yeah. Cool. Ethan yep. Hawke's in it, and they talk about Sid and Nancy. Yeah, we when we were younger, we we went there. Like me and my friends went there specifically. <laughs> I mean, specifically, and I'm listen. The '90s were just a crazy time. That's just what it was. And we went there. We're like, yo, this is where like Sydney, like we didn't even give a shit. Like, I don't, I don't like in retrospect, I don't know why it was such an important thing to do. We're right. like, yeah, well, let's just go there and do heroin and have sex with people. Oh shit, <laughs> That's what we did. You know, it was like, whatever, let's just get a room there. <laughs> yeah, you know, like, yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, but it's just, it, it's, it's pretty funny to think about now, but like, yeah, just watching, there was something about, just that the nineties like just super destructive lifestyle. Uh and Sid and Nancy, like when you think of like Sid in, in general, um just I it, I don't even like the Sex Pistols. Like I listen to the record, I'm like, this is okay. You know, yeah. but back then it felt like such a big deal. And he's like, not even like when you break it down, he didn't even play on that shit. So no. Nah. Yeah, he, he came just, in after. He was just yeah. like a face of it. Yeah. yeah, he was like the face. He's like, oh, this guy's fucking. He's like, like you know, like almost like oh, a sure. a tamer, a tamer Gigi Allen or some shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. the guy that could play they pussy, threw him out. Pussy Gigi Allen. <laughs> yeah, pussy Gigi Allen. Like he didn't even. I don't shit. think Sid could fight. I don't think he could fight. Nah, I mean, in 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 a way, I don't I don't know if Gigi could either, but like he could sure take a punch. <laughs> He could sure well, take if he's a throwing shit at me. I'm sure as shit yeah. not punching him. I'm running. I think, yeah. Exactly. That... He doesn't have to throw a punch to win the fight. Just like, you're, shit. you're not going to go near him. You yeah. know, anybody yeah. who touches their own shit that much, you're like, I'm not going to fuck with that guy. I yeah. just can't imagine what that mic, uh, the mic, microphones already smell in general. <laughs> I just can't imagine what his <laughs> microphone smells Anyone like. Anyone bash his teeth yeah. out with the mic? Yeah, he would like bash his teeth. My friend, uh, I had a friend. His sister is in the hated documentary. She used to hang out with Gigi. Oh wow! Like, yeah, his, and she, yeah, she had crazy stories. I could only imagine, yeah, like our was, friend Ron. But apparently, he was the nicest guy when he wasn't uh high on heroin, when he wasn't on drugs. Well, he was, like, he, he, even chill dude. Like he, so, Showtime later on played uh all in the family, you know, Al in the family, you know, and it was a documentary uh talking uh to Gigi's brother Merle, oh yeah, Merle. and the mom, and you're like, wow, like appearance wise, he's got like a Hitler, like you know, he's just like <laughs> he's outrageous looking, right, right. but like he ain't real, like he's just normal when you talk to him. If you close your ears, it sounds like you know your uncle yeah. uh and it was just fascinating i don't know if you've seen that but it was just like it was just um, yeah so and he would he sells his art that he makes and he puts his own shit on the art pieces so he'll like uh, <laughs> uh, yeah hey, i'm good bro yeah I'm good, bro. you can keep that bro yeah you can keep that i don't love the murder junkies yeah. that much yeah <laughs> Gigi was cool but i i, I kind of liked his acoustic stuff a little better so like, yeah yo I'm, I'm good, is, is merle shit as valuable as Gigi's would be you too you know Pro you really yeah. you want Gigi's on shit on the painting well he just merle uh, shit 
Yeah. Merle just did a uh interview with uh you ever watched Soft White Underbelly? Soft what yes, yeah. Hell yeah. Awesome. I haven't watched his his interview yet, but, but I love Soft White Underbelly. The uh, the Whitakers, those are yeah. like my favorite people in the whole world. Oh yeah. I, I want to like spend Christmas with them. That guy does a lot of good stuff. I love Soft White. The, the, that's the 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 family in Appalachia. Yeah, that, in Virginia or yeah. whatever the inbred family. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah. wild, man. That yeah, is he, wild. Little Ray. He like he all he does is bark. He just barks. Yeah. Like he just like yeah. kind of kind of communicates with the dog. I I love that guy. I want to take him out to dinner. Yeah, you know, I spend Christmas with them. I the love co- those cats. The country is full of stories, man. Like you know, that's why. You so know, that's it, why you don't even have to write anything. Sorry, yeah. I didn't mean to cut you off. No, bro. no, go ahead. But like, yeah. that's why you don't have to write anything. Like, even with the stories I tell, like, even my next movie, like, it's a fictional story, but it's based on some sort of truth. And even like I have a bunch of other scripts, but like a lot of them are ch- just true stories. That so I you got your with. shit ready to go the next one? Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, pretty much. We're talking about doing a comedy together, but it's pretty much written. So uh, we're going to do like a dark comedy about uh, degenerate horse gamblers. Oh, that's awesome. Nice. So uh, should be yeah. cool. When, love- when my uncle Jim, who's Detective Bronson and Trap, he's going to be in. Uh, he's going to be the, the lead of the next the next one, too. Very cool. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, so July. Oh, you know, another thing that I liked that you have Detective Fulci. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm like, yeah, this dude, like once I see that, I'm like, yeah, he, this guy knows he's, you know, yeah, every now and then, you know, not to. Yeah. Fulci, right? Every wink, now wink. and then. Yeah. Yeah. Like sometimes somebody likes some shit or like you see some shit and you, you know that they're from the same planet you're on. I saw yeah. some I was like. Well, I'm Mike like, Shoshanovich, who plays that role, is also a Long Island guy. I don't know if you guys know him, but he's a Long Island filmmaker and actor. And, is he uh, going to be a, in Belmore? I told him about it, so hopefully, hopefully, I, I'll introduce you. But uh, he's cool. But I used to call him uh, Mikey Fulci was his nickname because his last name is so I don't know, it's like German or something. Shoshanovich. I didn't know how to like pronounce it when I was sixteen, so he was like, "Yeah, hey, just call me Mike Fulci." Yeah, like, that's All perfect. Right. Yeah, so yeah, that's like easy. Stuck, and then I was like, ah, Sergeant Fulci in the movie. Um, so before we, we talk links and stuff, like there's one more thing. You work in a movie with Linnea Quigley. Did you get to hang out with her? Oh, I know Linnea. Uh I'm trying to think. Did we hang out on a set? I think I was there like a couple hours before she was there. And we kind of was I on set? You talk about hunters. Yeah. And then uh yeah, I was there. I, I saw her one day on set of Hunters. And then, you know, we connected at, like, conventions when we were, like, promoting that movie and stuff. But Lene is cool. She's great. Cool. Yeah, yeah. She's really awesome. I would love to work with Lene again. We did another movie that never um came out or anything. We did two movies with her, but the other one didn't come out. Or You know, that's the one, the one thing about movie making, you know, that I – um. Like when I write a song, it comes out because I make sure it comes out and it's only three minutes. You know, sometimes when you make a movie like we've we've spoken to, you know, obviously filmmakers through the years and uh, it has to be so kind of like the shitty part of it where you work on something and it just never sees the light of day, which I I see. It seems to be like not a common occurrence, but it does happen. Right. Right, because that's the problem with making movies. It's like giving birth to a fucking like bowling ball every time you do it. You know what I'm saying? Like, like it's a collaborative piece. Sure, like I'm the director or whatever. I kind of oversee, and I have complete creative control because I'm the one who paid for most of the movie. So, it was. Uh, but yeah, you know, people don't show it. It's a it's a collaborative piece. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's a collaborative piece. You're dealing with other people. You know, if not, I'd be making movies in my basement about fucking Donald Duck or something. Or like, you know what I'm saying? Or I'd Yo. be uh making puppets or something, you know? Donald Duck. You need man. people to make yeah. movies, you know, you need other people sure. to make flips. Yeah, so. yeah. But I yeah, love- we're making music that's why like uh you know, I started painting and stuff. Well, I've always painted, but right like twenty twenty I kinda got back into painting acrylics and oil paintings and stuff. So because it was like an instant, you know, the movies take so much out of me and years and so much, so much time and effort. Yeah, where it's yeah. like with a painting, it's like, oh, I could finish this and be in control and stuff. And I yeah. used to play in bands and make music and stuff, but I kind of got out and that get got out of that. But what I has composed? Uh, yeah, and it, but it has to be. Yeah, for sure. Because it's you're legitimately 
like you're a filmmaker and, and you make th- things like that. Like yeah. I remember the crossroads that I had. So like, I, I love both, but somewhere along the way, I just realized that playing the guitar seemed, seemed a lot easier. But when I first right. saw like Pulp Fiction for me and like uh, maybe Clerks were the two, because those were like, you watch those at, at the age that I saw them and you're like, I want to do that. Yeah. Like I want to do that. Like to me, like pulp when pulp even Reservoir Dogs, obviously. When Reservoir Dogs, Pulp Fiction, and like Clerks and Mall Rats came out, those four movies, I'm like, I fucking I want to make movies with my friends and all that other stuff. And you either are about that life, which I guess I wasn't, so I played music, or you are, <laughs> you know, with someone like you where you're like, I'm gonna go fucking make a home video in my fucking backyard. Right. You know, so it's yeah, because it's like I I was a desperado, you know, it went from like a you know, a baseball, baseball bat to a guitar to a graffiti can. And then next thing you know, you're making a movie, you know? Yeah. You know, it's kind of like that, that progression of life. Like, oh, what, yeah, what's your little niche? Like, oh, yeah. you're not that great at basketball also. Why don't you uh make movies? <laughs> yeah. And, 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 and you did, you know, uh, and we will, I'm going to definitely try to make to uh, Belmore. It's a Thursday at 4 p.m., which is definitely like a little tough, but uh, yeah, it any- is a tough, is tough time frame because it's like, ah, people are still getting off, but yeah, so uh, but yeah, Take just off that day, it'll be all right, yeah. So, um, <laughs> just send me all the links and I'll, I'll post it up with the episode and stuff. I'll right, put this cool. up on Monday, and it's what July, what it's uh, July 20th, 4 p.m., Belmore Movies and Showplace. It's um for the Long Island International Film Fest called Life. I think the address is two 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 Petite Ave, Belmore, New York. Oh yeah, July twentieth, four p.m. Now, uh, the the last thing that I I do want and we're ask up for you... a couple of awards too. Oh yeah, so you nice. it was like uh direction and editing was it? Best director we're up for best feature, best editing, best cinematography. I think one more. Oh, best story too. So. Awesome. Across the board, we're we're rocking and rolling, man. Yeah, man. Fucking taking this shit by the horns, bro. Fuck yeah, that's it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Congratulations. Um, but yeah, I gotta ask you real quick. I, I'm looking at your I got, I got one too, but go ahead. Yeah, yeah. You it says you were a Copacabana guest, the Irishman. Oh yeah. How did you yeah. uh, get onto that set? That yeah, that was cool. A friend did... of mine sent me a casting call, and they were like, "Oh, we're looking for uh, Irish <laughs> or Italian people." And I was like, "Oh shit, I'm both. I'm Italian and Irish." <laughs> I'm I'm, I'm, I'm a shoe in. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I'm a McGinney Watt. Like I was like, I was like, yeah, I was like, sign me up. So uh, went over there. It was cool. We did the uh, dressing. You know, I got paid. You know, I don't really do extra work, but I was like, "What's the opportunity?" I I would pay money to be on a score a score set. Sure. Set, so. So I went, it was cool. It was like two days and I'm in the exterior and interior of the Copacabana scene. The scene when he's nice. fucking with Joe Pesci about his pin, uh, Sebastian Maniscalco's character. I forget the character. Okay. Joe, uh, character. Joe Gallo. Yeah. Joe Gallo. Yeah. He's fucking with uh, Pesci's character. Buffalino. Yeah. Russell, Russell Buffalino. Yeah. 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 He used to make yeah, 14 million a month. I think it was. Yeah, he was he was a heavyweight guy, out of yeah. out of Pittsburgh, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. man, that uh, that's fucking know. pretty fucking awesome, you know. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I love that, that movie. Was cool. That was cool. This, and he also has mirrors. Uh, Marty has. I'm calling him Marty. Like, I yeah. Know. He uh he has He's... mirrors above his uh, monitors because he doesn't like people looking over his shoulder. I noticed that. His nice. mirror is above his monitor because he doesn't want people looking. But I just did a press junket with him uh, for uh, he just did a David Johansson documentary, and we worked with Marty. Oh, that that's bad. right. Yes, that's, I um, saw that. That was great. Yeah, it's that's also on Showtime. On Showtime. Yeah, yo, Showtime's yeah. killing like the music docs. Really? Between like the hip hop shit, like they they put out like the Supreme Team shit, the Nas yeah. shit, um, and then like you know random ass shit like that. Yeah, like I I love. They rented that. out part of my work for I work at a construction company or one of the con- the plants, the concrete plants. Plants. They rented. They shut down the plant for like a couple of days. Paid them all this money, and it's like 20, 20 seconds, like in the movie. It's amazing. A picture of that size. What what goes into it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. He was gonna be in the movie, but they're like, you know, Irish or Italian. He's like just Irish. He's like, 
We got a guy. We got a guy already. <laughs> we got a we got a guy that's already both. So, <laughs> so I'm I'm gonna email Marty. I'm gonna be like, I know Anthony Curry, so maybe we could work something out for the next we episode. Work out. We worked with he worked with you a few times. He was he came up on your junket. Yeah. You know, so we'll on, do. Bro. We'll do. Well. <laughs> yeah, let's get I'm let's the get star all of the Irishman. When let's... I shot the press junket, I was gonna say something. <laughs> I was gonna be like, "Hey, I was the extra." Junket. And Johnny North was like, "Don't you dare!" They were like, "Don't." He, he wasn't there, but I I wasn't gonna do that. I was just like, "Let me just do my job." Let me set this camera. <laughs> what What about Evan? Was Evan there? No, it was just Tim. Do you know Tim? Nah, Tim I just... it was just him. It was a small job. Cool. Sometimes uh... for those those documentary junkets, or they keep it a little more. Yeah, those are fun. I mean, it's just, you know, you're when you're not making what you're making, you're still involved in that world. So it's cool. It's like, right, okay, right. this is, you know, so um, so bef before we let you go, uh, give me five movies that you think are underrated that people should see. Um, Out of the Blue by Dennis Hopper. I think it's a brilliant masterpiece. They just did a, I think, uh, synopsis films or Severin films. Severin, just Severin. A, yeah, yeah, they do. the. 4k release have you guys seen it no the blue? no oh, yeah. i know the movie but i haven't seen it yeah so get your pen and paper down write the write these <laughs> down because you guys got to watch this and then we're gonna have a i'm gonna come back for yeah. another episode and we're all gonna right. talk about just dennis hopper and abel ferrar yeah uh, uh, all right so two Adam guys blue. two guys that i wish i did drugs with that's I'm just throwing it out there i know i know <laughs> abel's sober now and obviously dennis hopper oh me too but i'm just saying but you know oh, back sure, then yeah. you know Time machine uh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. All right. I think I have a list of fucking all right. I have some I have some uh I have some ideas. All right, out of the blue, Dennis Hopper, 1980. It was a Canadian film that he uh he went to act and the director was terrible and the production fired the director and he was like, Well, if, give me a couple days, give me the weekend, I'll rewrite the script. He rewrote it, came back on Monday, and they did it. It's with Linda Manns from uh from uh, Days of Heaven. I don't know if you've seen that. I, I, re I just remember the movie, but I never saw it. But Linda, Linda Mann's is great. And that's cool. This dude is like, fuck it. It's like, I'll just rewrite the shit and do it. I'll just do it. And dude, he's like, he basically plays a version of himself, kind of. But like, he's like drinking the whole time. It, apparently, yeah. like, oh, it's so good. Out of the Blue is a fantastic movie. Yeah. Um, I love uh, Alan Clark's movies. I would say Scum is probably the one I would say is the most underrated. Scum. Um, yeah, it's from 1979. It's a British TV movie. Um, you ever see The Education of Sonny Carson? No. Uh, that was a good one. Uh, I forget the actor's name who was in that, but that's like a uh, 1974 film about, you know, uh, street gangs in New York, kind of. But not like The Warriors or anything. It's like a real deal. Kids in the street, like, coming up into the gang and stuff. Yeah, yeah. But it's, a, sure. it's told about... Um, it's told of this dude's life story, so how it starts in gangs, and then how he be, ends up becoming. I don't want to ruin it, but that's no, awesome. a good one. Yeah, yeah, I'm on that for sure. Yeah. Um, a woman under the influence, John Cassavetes. Yes. I think that's his most underrated film. I could say Killing of a Chinese Bookie too, but a woman under the influence, I don't think it's as much. Uh, I don't know. I think that's a good one. Uh. What else? I mean, I could say Gummo, but I feel like Gummo is respected now, but when it came out, it wasn't respected. You know we were. I mean, <laughs> you know, it's seeing it in Belly was a whole, <laughs> that shit blew my mind. <laughs> yeah, exactly. The only the only good minute in, in Belly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Shout out to it's Nas, true. though. Shout out I kind of like, I kind of like Belly. Listen, if Nas still wants to do the show, we could do that. Just, just throwing it out there. I like know? the scene where he's like, uh, <laughs> With the kid, and he gives him the uh, he gives him the chain or whatever. He's like, "Yo, stay out of trouble, man." <laughs> it was that's a great I, scene. They're great in like, the middle of the projects. Great, idea. I like that movie. Yeah. yeah, people hate on Belly. All right, so Belly is my yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Belly is my All right, these five movies that we're we're gonna watch, and then we're gonna have you back, and we're gonna we're gonna discuss. Oh, and um, <laughs> I got one more that I think this is six. Um, that's it. There's a movie uh, called Paisan by uh, Roberto Rossellini. It's a 1940s film. Um, Rudy. I'm going to give you more. I'm going to give you 10. Rudy. Rudy. 
Rudy, I think that's underrated. Yeah. I think not enough people to talk about that movie. The anymore. football movie? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. With uh, Sean Astin. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, yeah. this movie by uh, Robert Bresson. He's a film, uh, French filmmaker called Pickpocket. That's also an underrated joint. I could go on forever about underrated movies. Awesome. Oh, yeah. oh yeah. Vigilante, Bill, Bill Lustig. So Vigilante, I, yeah. I just saw last year for the first time. because I, I think really? was James Remar in that. I think is it Ramar. I think he does. He might have a small. Is, yeah, is Ramar. It? Yeah, I think I think he is. But I love Bill Lustig. I you know. Oh, he's great. Yeah, listen, Independence Maniac. Day, Independence Day. Like you know, we were fucking with Uncle Sam yesterday, so we yeah. we throw that on every July Fourth. Yo, I was I like, know who, I know the guy who made that mask. Oh yeah. Yeah. Apparently, he has a funny story about that. How that mask came into fruition. Apparently, this special effects studio that he worked good, for good mask. Was, was working on Uncle Sam and his boss hated him, right? His boss was like, You're the worst effects artist here. And so <laughs> they got they got hit up to uh to do Uncle Sam. And uh he was like, Oh, they need some cheap, shitty masks for this horror movie they're trying to do. And so the, we're gonna have you because your shit looks like shit. Yeah. And it, and then he did it. <laughs> and that's the fucking most iconic thing of that movie is that is that it, mess. it really is. It, it fucking works. Um, yeah. and, and listen, it, it's completely outrageous. Like wa- rewatching it for the hundredth time yesterday, listening to like Isaac Hayes act is yeah. next level, you know, but like I love Bill Lustig, man. Like I so I went to we went to the Maniac Cop screening at uh, Nighthawk. Oh, wow. And of course, I got to ask him. I'm like, his favorite movie is my favorite movie. So he said, Maniac Cop 2. And I was like, absolutely. He's like, that's my favorite movie. And I'm like, I think that's your best movie. It was just like this perfect. Oh, that's a favorite movie that he's done? That Yeah, that he's, he's done. Direct? Yeah. Oh, shit. Yeah, because I, I think it was like a perfect balance of just like uh, action, horror. Like It was just killer. I'm still trying to get my girlfriend to watch it. And she just she never will. Every Maniac year. Cop yeah. too. That's a fucking great flick. Every year, Bill Lustig is fucking. I wish he. I wish he would make. I wish he would make more shit. I mean, Blue Underground. What he's doing. Blue, Blue Underground's Underground crazy. Like the the amount of westerns and shit he's putting out. Yeah, the Blue Underground stuff is like his new calling, and yeah. he's doing he's doing the Lord's work there for sure. Yeah. Uh, yo, man. Anytime you want to come back and just hang out yeah. and talk movies. Uh, thank you, man. We'd love to hang out with you. No, so thank you, guys. That was cool, man. I, I yeah, like talking. I feel like I talked to you guys all night. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, I had to throw some bullet points in here, but like, you know, shout out to Johnny. He's like, my boy Anthony made a movie, and I feel like you should talk to him. And I was like, yeah. Why would he want to talk to us? <laughs> That's what. <laughs> I was thank you, Johnny, because this shit was so, cool, man. Cool. Awesome. Um. Yeah, man. Thanks, so, man. uh, send me whatever links, uh, you want me to attach to the episode, and we'll put it out on Monday. All right, cool. I cool. appreciate and you guys a lot. I hope to see you there on Thursday. Yeah, yeah, yeah no man. doubt. All right. No doubt. Later, Take man. it easy, Thanks, guys. Thanks, dude. Have Peace. A good night.